So let's open up Illustrator and let's also open up our project folder. And we have the ID and the layout right here. And we're gonna drag those and drop them right into Illustrator. And they should hope it hopefully open up uh, compositions for us. So for this, I'm actually gonna close this one. Uh, it looks like Illustrator is creating weirdly sized documents. So we're just gonna do create new. And we're going to go to web because that sets us to pixels. And we're gonna say 1024 by 1024. And then open that up now. There we go. Now it's a square composition. And now we can go back into our project and drag and drop both of these here. And we want them to be in the center. So we'll hit enter for that one. Hit OK. There we go. And let me double check in our layers. I don't even know what sort of, go back to essentials, I guess. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. So here are our layers. So we have two linked files here in this one layer. So we can toggle this one off the top and this one off the bottom. And so we can use these to get layers separated out. Just like that. And we maybe also want window info, maybe. Nope, not info. Window appearance, I think is what I'm looking for. There it is. Yep, and so here we can dock these one on top of another, I think. Yeah, there we go. And so for this layer on the bottom, we're going to set our opacity to 50%. And make sure this is selected, opacity 50%. And there we go. So now we can change this to a reference layer, and then we can create a new layer over the top of it or over the bottom and lock this underneath. And then this will give us an idea for, okay, so we understand that this is the cap, this is the body, and this is the label. And now we can start to begin, we can begin to create everything the way we need to. So this first map that we're going to create is our color map. I'm just going to get rid of the stroke here. And we're going to drag out a rectangle underneath all of this. And I need my colors, so let's go to window and find colors. Here we go. And for some reason it took the stroke and not the fill. So I want this to be a sort of brown. So I'm gonna find like a nice dark brown. It has a little more red in it than not. But I want it to be darker, there we go. I think that's okay. This might need to be a little bit darker so I can switch this to HSB and just turn this darker. Darker. There we go, something like that. Maybe even darker and less saturated. And looks okay. And so we have that base layer. This is going to be the base there. And I also want to make sure that this is filling the whole composition. So let's just make it go outside of the bounds of the composition just to be double extra sure. And so that's going to cover the color of the bottle here. And then we're also going to get a color for the cap. So let's create a new layer for the cap. That cap. And this we can do in a rectangle because of how we position these meaningfully. Here I can drag a rectangle out here. And the color that I want for this is I want this to be zero and I want this to be 80%. Maybe, yeah, that looks good. So that's going to be the cap. And then the next layer is going to be the label. And this is where we get to have fun. So the cap and the base are going to be just a simple solid color, just like this. That's what the material is going to look like. But with the label, we're going to do some real fun stuff. So now we get to design this label. And so I want to have the same base color. And so I can drag this out just like this. And in fact, I can drag it beyond. Oops. Just like that and drag this down. Illustrator, always, always a fun time. Okay, so drag those down just so they're kind of hanging off the edge so I know that I'm not missing anything. And let's grab this, unlock this reference layer, open this up, and I'm gonna turn this off so that way we lose the colors because I already know what's what now that I've referenced it enough. And bring this up to the top and we can see where my label is occurring. Let's bring this up just a tiny bit somewhere in between these two shells. There we go, that's, that's good. And so now we can use this label layer and we can start to work with it. So, I want to create a, go from here to here. We're going to create a, another layer, and I'm going to make it a nice red color. That actually looks pretty good. And I want it to be on the bottom, maybe around here. And so um, I'm doing this from memory, but it's probably better if I actually looked at the reference here. So let's move that in. 
And I'm going to do a different tonic than what we're seeing in the reference image because I, whoops, I don't want to copy this um, directly. I want to kind of innovate on its design on my own, make it my own, so to speak. So you feel free to make it your own. Uh, the reason why I'm also using gray instead of white is I want it to reflect a certain amount of light when I go and use it. So this, this background version, for example, this can actually be a 90% whiteness instead of just gray. And the cap we can leave as somewhat of a gray or, you know, actually we'll make that also a 90% lightness here. So let's go here and set this to 90%. There we go. And then we can go back and hide the cap and we can also lock the reference. We can also uh, set the reference layer to be 50% opacity so that way it's not too bright on top of there or too, too obscurative on top of there. And actually we can turn that off for now since I know that the, well, I, I'm going to toggle it on and off basically. Um, but essentially what I want to do now is I want to create the sort of flowing shape and kind of create something similar to here. So let's move this up and that up, something like that. That looks okay. And I want to have a nice gold border. So I'm going to add in this color here. They make it a nice gold color. Let's go back to RGB. Need a little more red, a little bit of green in there. And that's going to be the stroke. And I need to check the stroke point. We're going to make that a five point stroke. And I want it to be, let's see, do I want it on the inside? I think I'm going to put it on the inside. Yeah, there we go. And then we want this to mimic the same thing. So if I hit I there, there we go. I can apply that also to the bottom. And I think that gold is maybe a little too bright. So let's go back to HSB and maybe make it a little more orange. Probably make this bigger. Nope, it won't let me. Um, this dark, a little bit, a little brighter than that. Yeah, somewhere around there is looking better. That's too yellow. Maybe more saturated. Yeah, more saturated and a little bit brighter. Uh, it's not quite what I want it to be, but you know what? It's close enough. This is the power of close enough. If you want it exact, then, you know, make sure you get it exact. And then let's see here. I kind of want that stroke to be on the top and bottom. So actually let's move this in ever so slightly. Just like so. And then we're going to do the same thing to the top. This in just like that. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So this is going to be the label section and now we need to add a little more here. So let's see, where is the pen tool? Here we go, the anchor tool. So here I want to add a point, say roughly around this point. It'll let me, or I can just move it up. See, I don't wanna move this whole thing up, so I need my pen tool. And this is actually why I prefer Affinity Designer is because working with pads and pen tool and all that inside of Affinity is, in my opinion, much better than and more intuitive than it is here in Illustrator. So I think right around here is what I said. I'm just going to bring this up. I'm going to grab this one and we're going to smooth this out. Get it round. Really, really round it out there. Really round. Okay. And then here we can take this, this edge here. And bring it down. Like that. And then the same thing over here. This one, hmm, that's tough. I, okay, let's go back. Let's say we want to add a point here, take that point, align it to this one. And let's see, window, align, and then we want to the bottom there. There we go. And then do the same thing over here. Grab the pen tool, grab this one, grab, whoops. Let's lock this background layer with control L. Now we can man, lock that. There we go. Now it should be able to, there we go. Select these two points and we're going to use our line tool between the two of these. Just bring them down to the selection. There we go. 
So it is a little bit finicky to work in uh, Illustrator sometimes. I Like I said, I prefer Affinity Designer, but you know, we work with what we've got. And then we can grab and pull this down. And it's doing some weird stuff again. So instead of doing it with the anchor drag point to round this out, I think I'll just do it with the convert point. And I'm just gonna open this up to the anchor point tool. And now we can drag this out like this. And there we go. And let's see with this point, drag that out like this. Maybe move it. Oops, move the point to the left, like this. And I'm just using some of these UV grid points to kind of help me figure out what's actually happening here. We're gonna move this one to the right, this. And then I'm gonna get that convert point tool again. Do something like that. Yeah, there we go. So now we've kind of got this swoosh going on right here although it's not as wide as perhaps it could be. So if I grab some of these points using, and I'm just tapping A to switch to this white um, arrow tool. And the reason why I'm doing that is uh, so I can grab the individual points. And this is again, just kind of a basic graphic designer uh, understanding of Illustrator. And hopefully you have that sort of background that you can pull on in order to do this. Um, otherwise uh, you can ask me about it and I'll explain or maybe I'll make a YouTube video on Illustrator. There we go, that looks about the kind of label that I want to have for this. It's similar to what, what's going on here. The reason, uh, let me just put this away underneath here. The reason why um, I set this up just like this is because we want the left and the right side of this UV layer to be exactly the same. So you'll notice that the way that I set up this vector is so that here is going to match with here. And uh, that's that's pretty helpful, so. There are some minor issues, so if I hit Alt and I drag this handle in, I can kind of fix some of that. It's not really 100% necessary to do that, but it will uh, prevent my OCD from driving me insane, which is, uh, you know, that's always a good thing. <laughs> so there we go. I can also save this. I'll so just file save as, and we can save this, you know, in the tonic folder. And we can just call this tonic. And that will be an Illustrator file that we can work with. All right, cool. So the next thing that we need to do is let's create some more of the elements for our color map here. Um, I can actually turn on these base layers and that will kind of give us an idea of what it's going to look like. Also make sure that I'm going to the edge. I am perfect. And I kind of want to move this rectangle down here just a little bit again. Let's zoom that in. There we go, snap it there. So these are pixel perfect that what we're doing now in terms of Illustrator, which is actually really useful, although it's not entirely necessary, as long as our colors and everything are falling within the UV shells um, accurately enough, we don't have to worry too much about that. So that's good. Okay, save that. And I guess the next thing that we're gonna do, let me lock these back up again and lock this rectangle layer. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get in some text here in order to create a title and whatnot. So I think for, um, for this, I'm going to use the uh, font Georgia because it comes default with Windows. Um, if you don't have a default Windows font here, then you're more than welcome to peruse uh, Google fonts and install whatever you like over there. I'm gonna use Georgia because it's, just, it's standard. So we're going to, I'm gonna drag out this right here and I'm going to allow it to span across, I think this far. And I'm going to say, um, hmm. we're just gonna say total health and then tonic underneath. And we can center this and now I need my a character text option. So type character right here, that's also control T. And we can kind of dock this in here since I'm not really looking at my layers. I can also dock my color above here, just like that. And actually I kind of want the color to, oh, there we go. We can dock that to the side, there we go. And libraries and properties I'm not really using, so we can kind of collapse right now. So 
or I can do it like this. Here we go. Character. And we're going to make these large. I'm going to change it to Georgia. So Georgia. And we want it Georgia bold. Nice, healthy, bold. And let's do paragraph centered. And we're going to go back to character and we're just going to make it extra large. Something like that. And then tonic needs to be even larger just to drive the point home that it is indeed a tonic. And then we can also tighten up the letting between these two layers. This. Just like that. And I kind of want to make this the same color red as the background. So if I do this, there we go, we can get that red. And that's looking pretty nice. I kind of want to open up the space in between. So we'll open up our tracking just a little bit here like that. We could also set it in gold. That's another thing that we could do. Uh, but I want to leave it in red. I think that looks fine. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this and line it up with this line right here. I think that looks good. Yeah. And then I'm going to create a duplicate by holding alt and shift. So it moves directly down. And I'm going to say professional grade. And then we're going to change this black. And I'm going to use the Google font that I have downloaded here called Montserrat. And we're going to use Montserrat bold. And we're going to just make this really small. Not really, really small, but small enough to kind of span this. So something like that. And actually, instead of Montserrat Bold, let's use Montserrat um, Medium. And let's really track this out. So instead of there, we'll have 200 or something like that. And then what we can do is we can close this up just like that and move it down. Professional grade, uh, total health tonic. There we go. And so now this is centered more or less underneath that. And then we're also going to duplicate this up right here. And we're going to say super health company. <laughs> and we're going to make this white. There we go. And bring that down. And I kind of want to make this smaller. I feel like this is just too large. Uh, like that. Super health company, the professional grade tonic. I want to make this a little bit more semi bold. It'll do the same here, semi bold. Try not to create too many differentiations in our text there. I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, Georgia bold, Georgia regular bold. Yeah, we'll leave it bold. Uh, we could even track this out to 100 probably. There we go. And then we'll also do a duplicate down here and say leave this in white and switch this to Georgia, Georgia. Let's do Georgia semi bold or Georgia bold. We'll do Georgia bold for this one. And let's move in the tracking a little bit. We don't need that much for this one. So we'll say only, yeah, only natural, natural um, ingredients. Of truly natural ingredients, we'll say only natural ingredients, and then we can duplicate this down. And actually, what I want to do is I want to left align this because this is supposed to be red in order, so something like that. And actually, let's keep this all here like this and open this up. Only natural ingredients. Oops. Alcohol free. And then let's close up some of this letting. We'll just put it back on auto. Maybe scroll it up a little bit. Alcohol free, but we want alcohol free to be just regular. There we go. And we can also change the size of this from 21 to say, I don't know, 18, maybe. Let's say 16 would probably be good. So change that to a 16 point and then close up that letting a little bit more, just a little bit of space in between. Alcohol free, no chemicals, and um, antimicrobial. There we go. Something, something cheeky like that to really 
sell the point home, I guess. And actually, you know, maybe we'll leave this all regular, all bold, or I don't know, we can we can do italic or bold italic. Yeah, let's do bold italic. There we go. That way we're not using too many different font sizes and all this. We can actually shift this up a little bit, leave a little bit of extra space in here. And I feel like this is competing a little too much, so let's change the size of this down to 18 and leave it at let me bold. Uh, let's try it there. So that looks okay. Uh, file, save, and then let's continue on with some of our other components there. This red doesn't look quite right to my eye, and I think it's because uh, we'll note that we have this reference layer over the top, and I think it is wrong to my eye, so let's get that, and we'll just kill the stroke. There we go. Yeah, that looks a lot better to my eye. And it was because we were trying to sample the color with a semi-transparent layer over the top of it. Now that I've shut that off, we shouldn't have too much of a problem. Let's uh, nudge this up a little bit. That should be okay. And maybe, I don't know, I like hierarchy, so let's go back to our character here and say just italic there. There we go. And that looks okay. That looks all right to me. And then we can actually, we can nudge this over just a tiny bit. And then the next thing that we need to do is we'll create a little emblem here. So we'll grab our circle ellipse tool and we'll just pop it right there, something like this. And this will help anchor the eye to that area, just like so. And then we want to, again, turn off that layer. So we're going to turn off our reference layer and we're going to go and instead of having a, uh, let's also get this sitting on the actual path there. Maybe make it, yeah, that's about right, I think, in terms of size. Maybe a little bit larger, not a big deal. Yeah, that looks like a good amount of space coming around here. Maybe nudge that to the right. So instead of having uh, red inside here, let's change it to be, see, how does white look? Not quite right. Um, I don't know, let's set it to this. Uh, Let's get my swatches out. So window swatches. We'll add this color in here. Yep, that's fine. And then we throw this on there. Uh, actually, I don't need brushes. We'll close that. I just want the swatches. There we go. And then for this, we can also grab that swatch there, and we can just modify it a little bit, make it a little bit brighter, or a little bit darker, maybe. I don't know, something like that. That looks okay. And then. Uh, Actually, let's make it 67%. So I'm at 1%. Yeah, there we go. And then now we can create a little cross that'll go in there, a little medical cross. So here, I'm going to hold Alt and drag just like this. And then we're going to make that the same red as this and get rid of the stroke. And then I'm going to hit Control C, Control F to duplicate it on top of itself. And then we're going to take both of these and find Window, Pathfinder, and then we're going to merge them together. And then we're going to take and grab the, these edges here. Whoops. Here. Oh, this can be a real pain. Actually, if I double click this with the V key activated, I can isolate it. And now I can work with it in peace without having to try to isolate the rest. And now I can kind of round that out a little bit. That's nice. Uh, this is also one of the reasons why I wanted to work in this and not in Photoshop is because in Photoshop rounding those edges, uh, it can be a real pain. And so I found that working in Illustrator definitely serves to help uh, mitigate that problem. All right, so moving right along. Uh, I know it's been a minute. We're getting into some graphic design stuff. Um, let's continue on. I think I'm going to add some text here and a little bit of text on the side here. So here... Let's grab some text here. Let's do it like right here. Maybe cut it off around this area. Yep, and let's set this to Georgia again, but no italic, we'll just leave it in regular. And we'll change this to something like nine, nine or eight. I think eight is gonna be good. And we want to get rid of all this extra letting. We wanna get rid of some of this extra Actually, we can leave that there. Um, and let's see, type, insert special character. Uh, let's see, uh, insert, fill with placeholder text. That's what I'm looking for. And so now I can kind of massage this and make paragraphs out of it. 
and do stuff like that. And I don't know, you, you, you don't have to spend as much time on this as I'm seemingly doing here. Um, I just want to, as a graphic designer, I like to make things look really nice or at least somewhat believable, even though this isn't actually legible text that anyone's going to read or anything like that. Um, you know, it's actually nice to just have that in there or something similar to this in there. So I'm just going to. There we go. So that's fine. I can also delete this extra bit there there all right so we have this one on the left maybe move it down and get it in line with the logo here if i hit Control r i can actually get my guidelines there Let's just nudge that ever so slightly um, i can also kind of make this a little bit more gray so that it's not so um just i just set it to grayscale make this like 71 percent gray so it doesn't stand out so much against the the rest of this stuff because we really want this to to really pop in my opinion and then over here maybe halfway through here we can also go over here like this and then i can fill this with placeholder text of type and then say fill with placeholder text and then we'll just get rid of this extra bit at the bottom and then maybe make a second paragraph here and actually the line length is probably too long here so maybe if we just for uh see something like that i don't know so close enough that should be okay i think yeah like that all right so that's looking pretty good and maybe it will just move this over to this line so. We could also put more logos and stuff in there, but I think this is good for now. I don't want to get too into it, so to speak. And let's do this. There. All right. That looks okay. Yeah, looks good. Perfect. All right, so now that we've done this, we can delete this reference out of here. We'll save this. File save. Uh, for some reason, it's not. Okay, there it goes. And then we want to do file export export as. And then we're going to export this as a PNG. And we're going to say use artboards range one. And then we're going to save this as tonic underscore color. Whoops, that's not an underscore. And there we go. And we wanted it to 72 pixels per inch and we can leave the rest of that the same. The background should be uh, black and then we'll say okay. And now back inside of Blender, what we'll do is we'll duplicate this to create another uh, image here. And we'll set this to sRGB and we'll load an image in here. Whoopsie, let's go back uh, right here to color 01. We can chop off that 01 later on if we want, but now, if we put that on there, you can see that our tonic has its label and it's looking pretty good. I may need to shift a lot of this stuff over to the side. Let's see, yeah, it looks like we need to shift it more to the left. So everything is kind of a little bit left here. You can see it is off center. So what we can do here is we can grab this, we can grab this, 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 and we can just hold down shift. Actually, let's turn on our reference layer and now we'll hold shift and just get it over to right about there, perhaps.
All right, so there we go. We've got our texture projected onto the tonic. It's looking pretty good. If this is where you'd like to stop, if this is good enough for your application, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, we're going to continue on and I'm going to show you how to make two more maps and then how to combine some of them in order to create the roughness effect as well as the metallic effect. Now, these are the only two other um, values that we're going to be dealing with on this so i know this looks like a lot but really we're only dealing with a few of them and essentially what it is is the metallic is going to determine how much of this is going to look like a metal and then the roughness is going to determine how a rough or shiny it is so if you can imagine this has no roughness and therefore it is completely reflective like a mirror and uh, obviously nothing in the real world exists like this except for maybe save some mirror like surfaces but essentially, if you took a piece of sandpaper to this and roughened it up, that's what roughness would be like. And you can see it reacting there in real time. So we're going to create two maps, the metallic. It's going to make it look more like a metal. And then the roughness, which is going to make it look in certain parts more um, diffused. The lighting will look more diffused. And in other parts, it will look more mirror-like. And that's what we're going to work on in the next segment. So I know that was a lot and I kind of had to cut some of it out or fast forward it or whatever. Um, I hope that was helpful to you. I know that we switched gears from 3D into the graphic design world and then we brought it back to 3D. So if you've got any questions about that process or you need help with anything, feel free to let me know and I will help you to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.